To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, and what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back, and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel header, and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simi. You've got quite a bit to get into today. Uh, It feels like there's plenty of news flying around at the moment, despite um, me being away at the moment, covering the European Championships out here in Germany. But there's plenty of Arsenal stuff to keep me busy, um, to keep me focused. And I have to say, with the kind of Euros starting to wind down now as we get to the latter stages of the tournament, I'm really, really excited about the new Premier League season and what that's going to look like for Arsenal. Hopefully, we're going to get um, some new exciting signings in the door. I'm sure there'll be a few players that depart as well. Um, But for now, the focus is on players that are signing for the club that are coming in. And on today's episode, we've got a few stories to get into. We're going to talk uh, Ricardo Calafiori. We're going to bring you the latest on that. Uh, We're also going to talk David Raya after it was just announced, literally 10 minutes before I press the record button that he has completed his permanent move from Brentford to Arsenal. We'll also touch on Gareth Southgate's plans ahead of England's game against Switzerland in the quarterfinals of the Euros. That one is, of course, coming up on Saturday. We'll bring you uh, an update on Chido Obi Martin as well. And I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that you've been throwing into the comments section over the last few days. But before we get into all that, happy 4th of July to everybody celebrating and um, I want to send my best wishes out to all our Caribbean based listeners uh, because we know that there's some pretty bad storms, the hurricane, etc., um, that is causing a lot of damage and uh, distress for people over there. So I just want to wish everybody uh, all the best. I know that a lot of you uh, from that part of the world do listen into the pod. So uh, sending you my best and, and hopefully uh, you're all good and all OK. Okay, let's start off then uh, with the David Ryan news, which, as I say, broke literally um, 10 minutes before I pressed the record button. Good job it did, because otherwise I would have probably had to re-record. But Arsenal have put this out just a little bit earlier on. David Raya has signed a long-term contract with the club to complete his move from Brentford. The 28-year-old goalkeeper spent last season with us on loan and was an integral part of the success we enjoyed and the history we made. He made 41 appearances in all competitions, keeping 20 clean sheets. 16 of those were in the Premier League and that earned him the Golden Glove. There's a little bit of a kind of bio on David Raya on the club's website that you can have a read of as well. Um, He had this to say, he said, after a year on loan as a gunner, I can finally say that I'm an Arsenal player for the coming years. I'm excited to see what the future holds, but always living in and enjoying the present. He says, it's a dream come true to be here. And I want to thank you all for the support you have already given me throughout the last year. Edu, the club's sporting director, said, we're so happy to have completed the deal to sign David from Brentford. He had a beautiful first season with us, winning the Premier League Golden Glove. He's a talented international, a great professional and a popular figure at the club. We benefited from all of this last season during his loan with us. Arteta said that he showed us last season what an important player he is, so we're delighted he is now officially our player. He's a big presence in our dressing room and we're really pleased to keep working with him. So lots of positivity around this, as you'd expect. It's the world's worst kept secret, isn't it, that David Raya was going to eventually become an Arsenal player. It was never an obligation that Arsenal had to buy him, which I think a lot of people found quite strange. We talked a lot at the time of the signing about a a gentleman's agreement being in place between Arsenal, Brentford and, of course, David Raya's representatives about how they were going to move forward with this. We know that Arsenal wanted to delay the permanent transfer, probably to move it into a different accounting period to help with the very, very strict PSR rules that everybody's having to kind of, um, you know, dance around at the moment and navigate around. Um, And in the end, Arsenal have got their man. And I think last season was a good audition, wasn't it, for David Raya, who started a little bit 
shakily, I guess, at the beginning of his Arsenal career. Um, I think it felt like at the time we were putting every single mistake he made under the microscope more than we would with anybody else, just because so many people were annoyed at the fact that Aaron Ramsdale, who'd become such a big part of the team and is such a sort of endearing character, had been moved aside in order to accommodate David Raya. I remember going into that season thinking we've got a lot of work to do, but not really thinking that goalkeeper was a priority and at the top of the list for us. So, yeah, um, it's done now. I'm pleased. Um, I think we saw enough from him in the second half of the season, especially to kind of recognise what it is exactly that he brings to the team that maybe Aaron Ramsdale doesn't and why Mikel Arteta was so big on getting this deal over the line. It's done now. Um, really, really pleased. The transfer is subject to the completion of the regulatory processes, but there's no reason why there are going to be any snags along the way. So David Raya is an Arsenal player now. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section below. Um, let's bring you the latest on Ricardo Calafiori then, uh, the Bologna defender who, of course, is being heavily linked with a move to Arsenal at the moment. We talked about this yesterday and the day before. We talked about the fact that, you know, if he does come in, he'd probably be coming in as a, a kind of Jakob Kivior replacement. Um, and in and in that, we might see Jakob Kivior maybe move on. Uh, we might see his sale part fund this deal. There have been a lot of reports coming out of Italy saying that a fee has been agreed, that it's around about 50 million euros. Um, from what I've been told today, it's not that advanced, not as advanced as some of the reports from Italy are suggesting. At least that's what it's what I'm hearing from this side, the UK side, the Arsenal side of things. It seems as though, um, yes, he is somebody that Arsenal are legitimately interested in. I think Charles Watts reported earlier today as well that he's verified that, you know, Arsenal are legitimately interested in Ricardo Calafiori. But to say that the deal is done um, at the time of recording this, 4.30pm German time on Thursday the 4th of July, is a little bit premature. That doesn't mean that there won't be progress made or a breakthrough in negotiations made in the very, very near future. But I can't say it's a done deal because I don't know that it is. Um, it's interesting because you get different stories from different people. You get different versions from different accounts. I've always said this. I think there are people within the the sort of industry that obviously do have their contacts obviously do have people to turn to and go to and try and verify this type of information from um, which is great but you also always have to be careful of the online aggregators because what you do get in a lot of instances is people who get a sniff of a story um, i.e this one and will tell you it's a done deal in anticipation that, that that is going to be the case very very soon and then if that does happen they can say well I was the first one to tell you I very very rarely um, tweet out anything with regards to transfers because um, I'm not one of these people that claims to be in the know um, so if I do tweet something out like what I did today which was um, as far as I understand it Arsenal are very much interested but talk of the deal being agreed between all parties is premature I said I'm hopeful we'll sign him he's a player I really like but it's certainly not a done deal as of now that's what I know um, that's what I believe to be the case and if I didn't have confidence in that then I wouldn't be uh, posting that because those of you that have followed me or listened to me for a while will know that I very very rarely talk about transfers like this um, not because I don't want to just because I don't know and I think there are people out there, as I keep saying, that do have that credibility, do have that track record, do have those contacts. But there's, there are so many on social media that are just aggregator accounts that you always have to be wary and be careful. So when it starts coming from certain people, I think then you can take these stories a lot more seriously. So as it stands, Ricardo Calafiori is someone that we're interested in. But um, do I know that it's a done deal? No, I don't. As far as I know, we're not quite at that stage yet. So that's my uh, download for you on Califiori. If you want to check out where I think he'll fit in to this Arsenal side, go back to yesterday's episode, have a listen. We spoke about it at length. Um, what does his role or what would his role look like if indeed this transfer 
is completed. I think he does become that kind of left centre-back slash left-back hybrid that Jakob Kivior is probably seen as by Mikel Arteta at this moment in time. Did I think that Arsenal would be going after that profile of player first and foremost in this transfer window? No, um, it doesn't even mean it's the priority. What it means is that they've seen an opportunity to do this deal and they're going to try and take it and they're going to try and make it happen. Uh, but yeah, we'll keep a close eye on that one over the coming days. It's a signing that if it does happen, I think Arsenal fans have every right to feel excited about. He had a great season at Bologna last time out and I think playing for Italy at these European Championships, even if it was a slightly disappointing campaign for them, um, he's kind of shown the wider footballing world what he's capable of and, and I guess what the fuss is all about. OK, um, I do want to touch on uh, another bit of Arsenal-related news. Um, Fabrizio Romano tweeted yesterday, I think it was, that Arsenal haven't made any progress just yet on tying down Chido Obi Martin to a professional deal. Uh, according to him, Arsenal have raised their offer to the player, but his pathway through uh, to the first team is his main concern at the moment. Now, remember, English law prevents Arsenal from giving him a professional contract until he turns 17. That is not the case in other countries like here in Germany, which is why Dortmund, Bayern are said to be sniffering around this player and feel as though they could potentially pinch him from Arsenal. They've got an opportunity to offer him something that just simply by law Arsenal cannot do at this moment in time. And I think I think they're probably, just based on what we're reading, more willing to give him a, a greater financial incentive to take that jump a little bit early, move over to Germany and go on to play for either of those two clubs. So it's not looking great in terms of keeping a hold of him. And I know that's going to upset a few people because he's been putting in some wonderful performances. He scored a ton of goals for his age and at that level. And he's a really, really exciting prospect. But, um, you know, he is someone that is attracted interest from the continent because of those really impressive returns and will probably... Uh, end up leaving us as things stand at this moment in time, which is a shame. Just quickly on England, who of course uh, take on Switzerland on Saturday here in Dusseldorf, where I'm based at the moment. Um, that's going to be a really, really interesting game because, as I've said before, if England don't dramatically improve, there's a good chance that they get knocked out by Granit Xhaka's men, who have been just in incredible form. Granit Xhaka also, if he wins the Man of the Match award, would go level uh, with the record holders for the most man of the match awards at a major tournament. Um, he's just always so solid, so convincing when he puts on that red shirt for Switzerland. I know that he had a bit of a rough ride at the start of his Arsenal career. He ended it really strongly, went to Bayer Leverkusen, has done brilliantly there and deserves all the plaudits he's had over the last uh, few months success with Switzerland and, and success isn't even winning it for Switzerland you know I think if they get past England and make the semi-finals that would be a really really good international campaign for them and if they're able to do that then you know again Granit Xhaka's stock is only going to rise isn't it it's only going to get better people are only going to look at him through an even more positive light than they do today so yeah we'll see how that goes but lots of talk has been around England why are they not clicking why is it not really working for them why are they struggling um why are they finding it difficult, despite having so many talented players, to to perform convincingly? And I think a lot of that is down to the balance in the team. I think a lot of that is down to a fear of failure and what that means. The pressure that they're under is huge. It's immense. Um, yes, Gareth Southgate has taken England to semi-finals and to finals. And that has kind of raised the bar in terms of expectation levels and you know, those guys have had wonderful experiences along the way. But when you manage that, it only builds the pressure, doesn't it, for you to then go on and, and, and sort of take that next step, get it over the line, etc., etc. So we'll see um, what happens. But according to reports, Gareth Southgate's going to switch things up and he's going to move to a back three. Now, he's without Mark Gahey, who's suspended. So it looks like he's going to play Kyle Walker, John Stones and Ezri Konsa as the back three, according to reports. But that does mean that Trent Alexander-Arnold comes into the side as a right wing back. And it also means that Bukayo Saka will have a change of position. Now, I've been arguing against the idea of Bukayo Saka playing at left back. I just don't think it's the right thing. Um, in this shakeup, in this adjustment, he would be playing as a left wing back. And 
I'm still not convinced that that's the right thing. I, I still think that Bukayo Saka's best position is on the right wing. So to move him onto the left for a start is already taking something away from his game. That ability to cut inside, which he know, we know as Arsenal fans he does to devastating effect. But to put him on the wrong side or on the other side, the opposite side to where he's used to playing, and then ask him to play a role that requires a lot more defensive responsibility is also a bit of a gamble and a bit of a risk. It's kind of a compliment to him that people look at him and think that he can do that, that he can change role, change position. And, you know, people would still expect a very good level of performance from him. But at the same time, I'm just really fearful of him becoming the scapegoat if it doesn't go right, if it doesn't go well. And England do indeed crash out at the weekend. And I'm always going to look at it through the, the, the club over country perspective because that's what I care about. I care about Arsenal Football Club. I care about our players and I care about that way more than I do about England's fortunes at Euro 2024. That's just me being blunt and honest about it. Not sure how it's going to work. He, he sort of went into that position in the game against Slovakia and I know that there was probably an instruction to, to try and be more attack-minded. I just felt like every time I looked up he was in a conventional left-back's position and you looked at Peter Pekarik who was playing at right-back for Slovakia at 37 years old. And even when Saka moved over there, at no point did England ever work the ball out to him and say, go on, take him on, see what you can do. Try and take advantage of the fact that he's very senior in his years. It just it just never happened. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit mindful of uh, the, the sort of role change for Bukayo Saka and the negative impact that might have. And I just don't want him to be the scapegoat for an England failure if that's what we see. Because unless, as I keep saying, unless they improve a lot, there's a good chance that Switzerland have enough to dump them out of this competition. I don't think anybody will be surprised if Switzerland did, given the performances we've seen from England here so far. Just quickly before I wrap up, one of the questions I've been asked a couple of times in the comment section of the last couple of episodes is around Arsenal and the potential of signing a number nine this summer. Um, I was asked, is there an update on a number nine? Um, and as I say, I had questions to that effect on multiple occasions. My update is... I don't have one, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know of any concrete interest in any number nine. Um, as I said, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend. I, I, I don't know of any serious interest in Victor Gyokares, who I know people have been asking me about specifically. Um, and I don't know of any concrete interest in, in anybody else that plays that position or is of that profile for that matter i've said it a million and one times before if you're after transfer insights i'm not the guy um from time to time um just from speaking to people you'll get little bits and pieces of information but i think arsenal have done an incredibly good job recently of keeping these things quiet um keeping very sort of keeping things moving in the shadows really um and as i say there are a select group of journalists that do get this information and you know that report it and do a great job of that a cracking job of that in fact but i don't know of any um progress in our pursuit for a center forward and it kind of seems to have gone a little bit quiet on that front and you're starting to wonder if arsenal are looking at an alternative to a center forward which could be a wide forward who they believe is a goal threat and can contribute just like Saka does just like Trossard does just like Martinelli did significantly the year before so we're going to have to wait and see but at the moment it looks like the only deal that is moving or is at least um, gathering some pace behind it is this potential deal for Ricardo Calafiori so yeah, uh, we're going to have to stay patient and um, and look, it's a long old summer. There's still plenty of time, still over a month until um, the Premier League season kicks off. And obviously with the European Championships, it feels like the market is just a little bit behind in comparison to where it would normally be at this stage, certainly for some of the bigger clubs anyway. Thank you for tuning in. Um, don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're listening on audio, please do leave us a review as well. And I'll see you all on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye.